So it is week 11 in the NFL, and if you throw in my fantasy team, I'm fighting a battle on multiple fronts here. A rare 10 p.m. Pac-12 game in college football, which just sounds like a dangerous end to a Saturday for me. And the joint bank account is now in the black. These are random celebrities beating Vegas, which is just stupid. It's dumb. Let's get it going. Chris Long, this is the Green Light Gambling Show presented by DraftKings, and as always, I'm joined by Stanford Steve. What's the word, dude? How are you, buddy? I'm uh, back from Vegas, symptom-free. Uh, different vibe, for sure, out there. Did not sit down at one table. Hmm. Um, just tried to take it to all the sports books. Um, but it was it was good. I mean, it was 70 out there. Pool, uh, new stadium swim at the Circus uh, Casino is absolutely incredible. Uh, on cabana spacing everything was good and uh we did well we did well um college picks are going well really well but they're uh, always going well for you man they're always going yeah, well for you try but i don't want to i don't want to jinx you and uh all right please you, don't you look you look youthful off a of vegas trip which is hard to do so shout out to stanford steve red eye back gotta skin, take the red eye back care products must be on point this year uh um, hey dude uh, last yeah. week, a little step back for you and a step sideways for me at 1-1-1 one, one, and one mm -hmm. because of that fucking Nick Chubb heads-up play. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so Was that your push or your loss? Push. Push. Yeah, all right. Fuck well, that. at least it wasn't a loss, bud. Yeah, I know. It's better than the loss, yeah. There you go. So we're still neck and neck, and I'm thinking Thanksgiving week is going to be a uh, high noon for us, Steve, I think. <laughs> uh, but first, week 11 in the NFL. Uh, what do you got? Give me your best pick. This week in the NFL, I am, I mean, it feels like every day, I don't know what, like your favorite high school rivalry, you know, college, the bulletin board material, this Raiders Chiefs thing is awesome. And I honestly can't tell. Uh, I mean, I know they were my, one of my favorite things ever was the old um, Bill Walsh, Mike Holmgren coaching tree show. They showed mm -hmm. when Andy Reid and Gruden were on the Packers staff and they used to make Gruden drive a bike in the snow to go get coffee in the morning. And like he did it every morning and yeah. you know how green Bay, you know, so I don't, I don't know what the, the dynamic, the, the dynamic of Andy Reid and Gruden is right now, but it's awesome to watch from afar. Um, and listen, the Raiders grew, they are playing, they play offense like no other. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, extra linemen out there. I mean, for you as a former DE, you would hate playing against this team. Right. Multiple tight ends, just trying to muck it up. They know their defense isn't good, so they're trying to keep them off the field. Uh, the play action is is not as consistent, but I mean, they still take their shots with, you know, with rugs and those guys. Um, I like what I've done. I think they're, they're really, really frustrating to play against. And I think, you know, now it's going over a touchdown. I mean, they beat them already yeah. and I, I understand I'm going against Mahomes, but I'll take all those points with the Raiders at home. I really like what they're doing. I, I don't want to say old school. Cause I feel like it's a new way of, of trying to find ways to run the ball. I've talked about Josh Jacobs and how much I love him on this podcast before. Uh, he's just, a, he's just a throwback. Uh, I did see um, Tyreek Hill is going to return punts now. Um, so that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might want to factor that into your over under, but I'll take the Raiders with the points here, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really fired up for this game. And I, I really like a little bad blood uh, yeah. with a division rival. That's been so good for so long. Me growing up uh, as a chiefs fan with Derek Thomas is my famous favorite player. So this, this gets the juices flowing. How about the bus driver in Kansas city is, is moving the line in Vegas a little bit. If you, how if you're dumb about, does that guy feel? <laughs> he feels, you know Ooh. what? He, he, feel, he might actually end up being, if he's a chiefs fan, smart. Cause he light a little fire yeah. under their ass. And, uh, I mean, people take that shit personally. It's not a big deal at the end of the day. Just beat them. But, you know, yep. here's here's the reason I think I think the Chiefs uh, win, the, win this game, but that is a lot of points. Maybe if you're, if you're you know, I used to call myself the tease god be, before that kind of, that, that, that train <laughs> went off the track. I would tease this game, though. I would tease the total down. There's going to be a lot of points. I like the over anyways. Um, I think Kansas City wins this football game. 
but I, but I like I, I like where you're going. There's a lot of points, and the Raiders have been good. And yeah. Derek Carr has bucked all his trends this year. So um, give me the Falcons, man. The Falcons, you know, they okay. call it, what do they call it? Hate week down there. It's like uh, it's like a college rivalry, man. Everything goes out the window with that matchup. And you couldn't come at a worse time. That rivalry couldn't come at a worse time for the Saints. I mean, yes, Jameis, the blessing here is that he got, you know, a little under a half of action, right, uh, last week. I thought he looked shaky. But what's going for him? Every quarterback seems like they've looked good with no preparation, including rookies this year. So I do think he eventually finds a way to settle in. I think this week Atlanta keeps it close. Remember last year Atlanta beat them uh, mm. when Atlanta was maybe even worse than they are now uh, at that juncture in the season. So uh, give me the Falcons yeah. to keep that thing close. Um, don't want to bring up uh, bad memories and negative thoughts from your playing days, but like how free are the Falcons playing? Like they're just letting it all hang out. Yeah. They got. I mean, I hate saying no pressure. They're out, but like, there is a freedom there where it's just like, yeah, you let's go, Matt. And, and go ahead, do your thing. And listen, when we used to be in the NFC West, we were like the redheaded stepchild. Yeah. Where, like we were the seven and nine team, but we would ruin people's you know mm-hmm. year. The year that the Niners went to and and damn near won the Super Bowl against Baltimore, we beat the shit out of them. Like we mm-hmm. physically beat them up, and I think we tied them once and beat them once. We almost we went into overtime twice against those guys that yes. that year. We also held Marshawn to like twenty yards on Monday night and would beat up on kill Russell Wilson and all that stuff. But those teams were were great teams, and we were kind of the bottom dweller, right? So this is this is the type of spot Atlanta can can show up in and be like fuck it this is a division rivalry we hate you you hate us I don't care if we're trash this weekend yeah. we're gonna ruin your year so I, and, I I really like Atlanta in this spot okay good um, your Eagles plenty mm. plenty uh, plenty of, of uh, mm. things have been said about them I asked Van <laughs> Pelt about. I asked him on uh, his podcast this week. I said, are are the Eagles going to go to the playoffs? And, you know, it got him going because uh, our researchers keep throwing the FPI stuff at him. And they keep saying, you know, he, he says you, you watch, you know, you watch the Eagles every week. And then you wonder if the FPI is watching them because it doesn't feel like they're watching them if they keep saying they're going to the playoffs. Exactly. I'm like- this, this is, this is last week I said, um, uh, it was my last stand, uh, with the, with the bears. And that was, had to wait all the way to Monday night for this. This one is the Eagles. Uh, and I said Cleveland last week, I liked Houston because of, of the, this feels like the game. The Browns always drop, yeah. um, weather still isn't good. Baker still looks very, very uncomfortable with the, with the elements and stuff like that. It's in Cleveland. Uh, this feels like a last stand for the Eagles. They need a win. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, the, it's we're getting later in the season. I understand it's not a division game, but this would be a hell of a win to get. They're getting three and a half right now. I will take the Eagles plus the points and what I expect to be not a 10, seven game like Cleveland was with Houston last week, but I don't think it's going to be pretty. Uh, but I think, you know, the Eagles will have enough, make enough plays to, to keep it close. Golly, they have to, it is, yeah. they are in a bad spot right now and I'll go no comment on that game. Uh, okay. I'm going to just the total stay away from me. And usually I have a little action on the Eagles. Um, a so, little. A little. Uh, <laughs> depending on the week. Uh, you know what? Give me, golly, this this feels, and I'm going to, uh, we'll, we'll save the one we're going head to head against each other for next. But I've been dancing around. I kind of I kind of like the under in the Pittsburgh-Jacksonville game. I kind of could like the over in Kansas City, Vegas, but I'll, I'll stick to uh, picking uh, a favorite here in the Dolphins. That feels like a very public pick. And I know we talked about the weather maybe up in Denver. My Dolphins. Yeah, your Dolphins. But you're not on the bandwagon so much this week. Are you a little more lukewarm because you're worried about the snow and that sort of thing? I'm trying to think. Like, you know, watching Tua in college, you know, SEC, it's – you know, cold game. I, I just feel like, you know, Denver, you never know. I haven't even looked at the weather. Yeah, it feels like it. it changes every four hours there. Uh, but it just, I mean, you know, Denver's still going to play some defense. Uh, could, you know, 
but Miami's won games without him doing anything. We go back to the Rams game. He didn't have to do anything. Didn't have to do anything. Um, the defense is that dynamic. Their secondary is playing out of their minds. The versatility, and, and, and we talked about this with the blitz pickup, the blitzes they have, and and the moving around of guys. And, you know, um, it's just it's just been awesome to watch. Uh, you know, we were talking uh, – I, it's amazing to me how Al Michaels and, and Collinsworth just forgot to bring them up the whole Patriots game Sunday night, talking mm-hmm. about how the Patriots, you can't give up on them mm-hmm. and the bills are atop the division. Like, yeah, like what about there are the- a bunch of games already ahead of, of, of the Patriots. So um, I love what I've seen. And plus those throwback uniforms they oh, wore last week beautiful. with the gray face masks. Those are beautiful. Those are mint. Beautiful. And yeah, I mean, I just looked at the weather, so I'm rushing uh, to get this in, but I, uh, it's like 52 and sunny on Sunday in in uh, in Denver. So something fishy about that line. Okay. Right. And I feel like everybody's going to be afraid of it because everybody's on it. But And even if they run – I know part of it is, okay, Miami's, you know, manufactured touchdowns, you know, defense and special teams. Even if they run out of that magic, I think they're a better football team than Denver. And Denver's got questions totally right now agree. quarterback. So – Give totally me the Dolphins. Right. I don't want to overthink it. Let's get to the one <laughs> that you and I are at odds on. First time. What are we in week? Where are we? 11. Week 11. 11. I think we're in week 11. Uh, again, last stand. Phillip Rivers mm. uh, always feels like, to me, that guy where you take him, you want more. You go against him, he burns you. Yeah. And the Colts, we've talked about it for a while. Uh, you know, last week, uh, we, we didn't get a chance to comment on the Thursday night game, but the Colts, you know, whenever they would come up this season, I've, th- I've right. talked about they don't have a win. They don't have a good win on the resume. They get a good win Thursday night. Yeah. They really put a good, you know, game plan together. Uh, I loved um, uh, Darius uh, Leonard. Leonard's comments today. I don't know if you saw that, but I guess Rogers told Warner for the Niners. He's, he's the best, best linebacker in the, in the league. Mm-hmm. Darius said, you know, well, I'm going to try and change his mind about that. Uh, I just love the way Darius Leonard goes about oh, he's things. Awesome. I, he's just incredible. I mean, I just love like he'll, he'll, you, you'll see a play made by one of his teammates in like two seconds later, if he's on the other side of the field, he'll just come running across like by the pile and just slap his buddy, like dap him up. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. like Dude. the energy he brings is just amazing to me. There would be no so infectious. If, if, if I could play with any defensive player at any other level other than the D line and like just zap back into a defense, it might be Darius <laughs> Leonard because yeah. he would just raise your intensity and my unbelievable, up, but like, when you have a guy behind you, you can play off like that and you can celebrate with, and he's going to be everywhere. It's like just fun. And it, and it elevates the defense. And that's what he's done because you know, that defense um, has been pretty trustworthy this year. I didn't yes. the sexiest, but no. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with him. Uh, I, so I do feel good about this too, yeah. because I, I feel like I got you in the corner against the ropes because now you're going to fight your way out with one of your most disliked, teams picking yeah, games I, I, that's the Packers <laughs> I, I also know that I probably feel good about picking the Packers because I don't love them um in general I <laughs> that's probably a good sign um I like the Packers because okay you got a top five defense top five offense and one of these nuggets that they throw at you hey use this on the podcast um it has to do with number one passer rating offenses versus number one passer rating defenses since 2000 that has favored uh, the offenses heavily, and that's what we're seeing in this spot. Ten to one, uh, ten wins, one loss for the offenses uh, in those situations. Wow! And then this year, everything has leaned offense. I mean, if you look at it, it's been a historic year as far as comebacks, where teams are blowing double-digit leads. The scoring's up. I just look at things, and the in the times that Indy's been tested, I thought they did a nice job against the Ravens, but that was a great matchup for them. Um, yes. And really, they, they win that game if, if the offense doesn't turn the ball over. Um, mm-hmm. But when they played the Browns, you know, they kind of, I mean, they gave up some big plays. Yeah. They didn't, let's let's put it this way, they didn't win that game for that team. And, you know, the loss to Jags seems like a long time ago, but the Colts haven't been tested. And neither have the, I was talking to Sanchez on my pod earlier. Mm-hmm. The Colts have not been tested against good offenses 
and Green Bay has not been tested against good defenses. So we're going to learn a lot this week, but Ty goes to the offenses. In my mind, I'll take the Packers. Okay. Um, first disagreement. Can't I wait. I know. Let's go college. All right. Uh, hmm. It's a decision to make. Decision to make. I I gave out Clemson. And I gave. I went against the alma mater uh, with Washington State. Let's go Clemson. Um, Trevor's back, and I just have a feeling. You know, Dabo plays that w- role really not. You know, nice guy. All shucks. This guy and that guy. When he p- tries to put it on you. He's going to put it on you. Yeah. And do you really think he's going to have Trevor come back? And he's like, all right, Trevor, hand, hand the ball off to ETN. Right. Uh, you know, like they're going to come out. I mean, they scored 52 in the first half against Georgia Tech. Mm-hmm. And Georgia Tech was trying like they were trying. Yeah. And Florida State just lost their, you know, uh, NFL prospect D tackle Marvin Wilson to an injury. Their best wide receiver NFL prospect, uh, Tamari and Terry just left it out and left the team. They lost another offensive lineman. Uh, it's just not, not going well in Tallahassee. Um, I think, um, Travis is back at quarterback. Uh, and that's because they, they started a true freshman last week. He re a broken collarbone. It just feels like, the bottom of a rebuild that Norvell's trying to do in Tallahassee. And I, I mean, I can't imagine how tough that is with all that's going on. You know, remember, you know, at the beginning of the, of the pandemic, when he sought out Texas players, his players accused him and not sent him like, it was just, right. just bad. That, yeah. and it doesn't feel like he's been able to, to, to get over that hump in a, in a rebuild where I get it. You're the new guy. And, and not like, you know, from a previous coach that might've recruited you. So, I just feel like it's a it's a chance for an ambush with Clemson here. Um, they need style points to to get in that one loss conversation. And Dabo has never been afraid to to keep the foot on the gas. And now, when Trevor goes out of the game, you know what you're getting with Uwe Lele and yeah. and the and the guys they got. So yeah. they're giving thirty four and a half, thirty five. We'll lay that. Wow. Put your balls in a wheelbarrow, Steve. I uh, it's pretty wild to see uh, how far the half-ass you semi holes have fallen since uh, <laughs> my days in Charlottesville as a as a Wahoo. It's uh, you hate to see it, is what the kids say. Um, and I hate to see Florida State struggling. Let's do joint bank account. Uh, okay. Tip of the cap to our booking department for this uh, poll. Uh, here's Kyle Long's pick: Chiefs Raiders. Chiefs are given eight. I don't know if you've heard that. Raiders. Why would you give the Raiders eight points? <laughs> I don't know. I think, honestly, I think what the, the reason that the Chiefs are giving eight is the Raiders haven't been that good at home, and I think they got kind of lucky the first time they played. So Nobody's ever really at home in Las Vegas. Oh, that's one way to think about it. Maybe odds makers should take that into account. That's a fucking brilliant call by you. All right, Kyle. Thank you. Peace. Peace. All right. So, Steve, what do you got in joint bank account? Uh, I'm going to go with the uh, home dog in college football. That is the Utah Utes. They've been ravaged with uh, Corona deals, two games canceled, but um, they got one of the best coaches in the country in Kyle Whittingham. Uh, USC comes in, who I think they scored more points in the last two minutes of their first two games than they did all the rest of the uh, the, of the time in their games. Uh, not what we've wanted to see from USC. I feel like Utah's a live home dog. We'll take the th- well, money line. Money line, Utah. Let's wow. go. Let's do it. So I'm battling back and forth here. And I guess, um, I mean, I, I think this, this, I think the Falcons could win that football game. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm going to go Falcons. Give me, give me the Falcons because I mm-hmm. took them doubling up on yeah, them. Yeah, doubling up on them. I, I'm thinking about the Titans. Um, I'm thinking about the Titans. I can't tell if we are. Here's the thing. You talk about being beat up. Uh, they just played in a, in a monsoon and got mm-hmm. the ball run up their ass like it was Army. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, so I don't know what to make of that. Um, I, I think Desmond King's arrival has helped Tennessee, and I think we might be undervaluing them because of last week. It's not every week your special teams plays that bad unless you're maybe the Titans. Kicking game has been awful all year. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna err on the side of caution and go the Falcons. I think they can win this football game. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, that'll do it. Check out the regular Green Light podcast. Uh, 
and we're still figuring it out, but I think we'll have uh, Thanksgiving picks ahead of Thursday and a regular Friday show. So we got uh, more to come on that. Yeah. I mean, it's what do you do Thanksgiving week besides drink, eat and gamble? I, I don't know. I <laughs> I have to figure that out. <laughs> There's a whole lot of like, I feel like Thanksgiving week and it'll be less so this year because there's less people around uh, and everybody should be safe. But like, there's a whole lot of like, babe, what are you doing in there? And it's just, I'm in the bathroom for 20 minutes. I'm looking at the board. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm watching something on my phone, like a trip upstairs. Hey, do you need anything upstairs? But I'm really going up to, to look at football for a little bit or sneak, uh, you know, whatever I might sneak upstairs. Do, uh, do you, uh, you'd be good at this because you probably already know it. There's definitely something in turkey or your Thanksgiving meal that makes you sleepy, right? Yeah, tryptophan. Okay. Yeah. See, I knew you I never, knew you would know it. It's tryptophan. I knew it. It's one of the most it's one of the, the hallmarks of, of Thanksgiving is just getting sleepy as fuck and hammering these games. So what what was your go to pregame meal? Pregame meal? The morning team of hotel the, the night before team hotel. No, the four hour before the game meal. So I would try to eat so I didn't feel like a fat ass, but carb up. I would get, you know, I'd do some pasta with some meat sauce, maybe, or I'd go sweet potatoes, mashed sweet potatoes, pile on some some chicken. But the night before, that's where I went absolutely ham. French fries, turkey burgers. The Buffalo nine, wings. Wings, the whole nine yards. Yeah. After meetings, like five scoops of vanilla Milkshake. ice cream. Vanilla okay. ice cream with uh, Oreos smashed up. God, I can still smell smell the night before. Uh -huh. Like, oh man, you uh -huh. come out of you come out of that team meeting, you smell buffalo wings, and uh -huh. then you smell milkshakes. Yep. Man, that, those were the days. Probably, oh, yeah, man. that's one of the biggest things I miss about football. But we're gonna get that experience all over again next week, and we can gamble legally as washed up uh, NFL and college players. So that's what Thanksgiving's all about. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, and you'll hear more from me and Steve next week, I think. Y'all take care and uh, stay safe.